Welcome to Make Kind Loud, conversations that turn up the volume. Today, I am talking to Alice Ruthie Bolton. What's up, Ruthie? How are you? I'm doing great. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. I know. Yes, I'm yes. A, I'm excited to chat with you. Thank you for saying yes. Oh, yeah. You know what? Thank you for your persistence, man. I'm telling you, you know what? It's, it's so much going on. It's like, um, I, I just appreciate when you want something, you got to pursue uh, my niece called me and just reminded me. I, I listen, char charge my head, not my heart, because I was really excited. About her. So, so thank you for your persistence. Oh, no problem, no problem. So I'm just gonna uh, tell the people about you. I'm gonna read your bio, and then we're just gonna jump in and have a good little conversation. Okay. All right. Mighty Ruthie is respected around the globe, not only for her skills on the court, but for motivating, energizing, and engaging audiences. Drawing on her rich life experience as a former professional basketball player, author, educator, and lifelong advocate for women. She had no idea her years as a first lieutenant in the Army and professional basketball player, combined with her love of the stage, would prepare her for something she really could get excited about, empowering others, especially women and girls. After escaping an abusive marriage, she now travels around the world and shares her story in hopes of preventing the abuse of other women. As an expert on transformation, showing others how to turn traumatic situations into an opportunity to renew and transform yourself, her practical teachings help others how to help others how to deal with trials and tribulations, turn them around and grow from them. More than anything, Ruthie is honest and real. Her viewpoint is to use your gifts to serve others, to inspire others, to let their light shine and perform at their best. She often says, if I'm only remembered for being a basketball player, I believe that I will not, I will have failed in my job on this planet. I love that, Ruthie. I love that. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's talk about that last line. If I... If I'm only remembered for being a basketball player, I believe that I have failed in my job on that planet. What does that mean? You know, I, I really do, you know, <clears throat> and, and Luke, it talks about to whom much is given, much is required. And I've been given much. Um, I've, been, I've been given much um, in my life, the, the good and the bad, the, the things, everything that comes along with my journey. I'm, I've accepted it, embraced it. And so... For one, God has spared my life. I was in a car accident in 85, and I was thrown out of the car. I could have been taken out of here, but he saw fit for me to still be here. So he had a purpose. He gave me a new lease on life. But many people get thrown out of a car. That's history. Right. But I, just, I think about that miracle that he, he gave me. And so I every day, you know, as I start to play basketball, I say, you know what? I got so much to give, and I'm thankful. I got so much to offer. And I want to use my life, and, and and I don't want to wait. I don't have to wait till I'm in this perfect place. You heard that I went through some domestic violence, but you know what? Hey, that's all part of it. I'm not gonna get mad and duck and hide at God for look at what I went through. No, you know what? It comes whatever I face. My faith is gonna be bigger than my fear, and no matter what I go through, God is bigger than all of it. So it's like I've been given much. I just and 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 if I. Every day I wake up, even today, I said, how can I be a blessing to somebody? How can I be so, how can I encourage someone, uplift someone today? And because, because I, my calling is bigger than me. Yeah. My calling is more than just about basketball. I'm more, as much as I love shooting that three and hitting that, but that it's more than just hitting a three point shot. It's more than just playing defense and putting someone on lockdown. You know, I love the game, but this message is bigger than the game. So that's what I mean by that. You know, is that it's all and anytime I go speak, I always say that in the beginning. I say, Hey, for the next 20 minutes, if 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 you think about me a week later or a day later, if all you can remember is that I played basketball, then I've done a bad job with this message. Right. Right. Well, well you were a a fierce basketball player though, right? <laughs> Girl, listen, you know, I was on a I've been doing so many Zoom calls lately. Oh my goodness. I, I was just <laughs> one. I got three more today. Um but I, I was I was on one with these uh, girls, and then one of the question they asked me, have you ever felt like quitting? And there was a time in my life that I didn't, that word was not even in my vocabulary. Um, I told about a story jumping over a fence and how 
I have to tell this story because it really embodies who I really am as a okay. person I became. And I was trying to um, jump over this fence. And, and I'm from a, well, I'm from a very small family of 20, 12 girls and eight boys. <laughs> wow. 12 <laughs> girls and eight boys. And, um, and so I, I, we, I was a serious tomboy. This Mississippi girl, just bad Jerry curl, ash your elbows, ash your knees, just trying to keep up with the boys, jumping fences, climbing trees. Jumping over a pot of water. And I remember this one day as I got ready to jump over this fence, it seemed like it got higher and higher. And I'm like, what is going on? I know I've done this before. And yeah. so I just took a deep breath and so I got this. And as I got ready to get to this fence again, I still couldn't do it. And I can look down in the field and see my relatives and just leave and say, motion them for me to come on. You know, we don't know, we know you can do it. Don't worry about it. I'm like, no, I can jump this fence. I stayed there and pumped it with that fence. Until the street light came on, and back in the back in the day when that light came on, you had five minutes to be in the house. I remember that night was the, the longest night, it seemed like of my life. Knowing I hadn't jumped that fence, I felt so unaccomplished. And so the next morning, I said, "I'm gonna get this fence, no matter what. I'm gonna jump over this fence." And I remember I got ready. And I said, "See yourself doing it. You've done it before. Move the fears. This fence is not taller. It's a fence you've jumped over before." And as I got ready to run and jump this fence, I think I sort of closed my eyes and I went and I leaped and I jumped over the fence and landed like on my backside. But I was laying on my backside celebrating, like, oh my goodness, I jumped this fence. That moment, ESPN wasn't there. Mm. NC2A wasn't there. The Olympic Committee wasn't there. The Hall of Fame Committee wasn't there. It was me and that fence. Why was that moment important to me? So when people ask what I thought about quitting, that moment, without knowing at the time, I believe that's the moment I started becoming an Olympian. Wow. That was my moment. That was my, my birth into this journey of resilience, the journey of overcoming, not making excuses, but finding a way. So when people ask me, I feel like quitting. I said, quitting. I said, every time I get on the basketball court, because of my journey, because of that, because of being told I wasn't good enough to play, had to pay my own way to trials. I said, hey, listen, I'm, I look at this, it's like a plate of collard greens, cornbread, and, some, <laughs> and, and some fried chicken. I'm right. hungry. I'm hungry when I get on the court. So that is my DNA, my, my mindset, and my hungry for, that's that's the difference. You can have, you know when you, your favorite meal, and I always mention collard greens because I like collard greens. When, when I'm when I'm not hungry, food don't taste the same. Cause I, I could do without that. I'm not hungry. But when you're hungry for something, you crave. Mm, I crave mm. competition. I crave for an opportunity to show who I am. And so, cause I know without a doubt that how my journey evolved. I wasn't supposed to play basketball according to man. The odds against me, it, it was it should, people. My college coach thought I I either had to be borderline crazy or my faith. He said, nobody can have faith like that. Right. How many more ways can we tell this young lady we don't want her? They didn't They didn't recruit me. They And then when I called them, they put me on a bus for 10 hours to go to the school. My sister had been on a private jet. They put me on a bus to go there. Oh, wow. I get there and then they tell me that they should have never had me come because I probably won't play in my senior year. How many more ways can they tell you you suck and you're not going to fit in here? But I still embrace that opportunity. I still say, you know what? But it was a scary place. But that's where my dad comes in. My dad told me, he said, daughter, because he didn't want to me to get on that bus. He said, this may be the most important ride. He said, it will be the most important ride you will ever take in life. This is going to dictate so much in your life. Because wow. if you quit now, it's going to be to quit everything else. Oh, yeah, that looked too hard. Oh, no, I'm quitting. He said, but they don't know the toughness that you have. My dad lifted me up. He gave me wings. Uh, he was a wind beneath my wings. And yeah, yeah. The words he spoke to me spoke volume of just confidence. And I believe in you. I got you. You got this. He saw thing. He he saw greatness in me when I didn't see it in myself. And so that's why I'm a huge advocate for. That's why I love speaking. That's why I share my book, The Ride of a Lifetime. I share my book, Keep Your Mighty Power, yeah. uh, about to you because I said, I know what it feels like to be on the other side. I feel like I'm not good enough. To feel like, what if I fail? 
Hey, I said, listen, you fell hard, you fell good. You fall flat on your face, guess what? You get back up, you're going to fall again. Get back up, you're going to fall again. So I encourage them to just to persevere and 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 just don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. Yeah. But you know what? That is going to elevate you. It's going to help you raise up. And it's going because there's a quote that I like to quote, and it's not mine. I don't know who the, who who wrote this, but it says, "We miss out on opportunities because they come in work clothes." Oh, that's deep. That's a we good miss one. Out on that's a good one. Work yeah. So somebody said that's too much work. I'm gonna let somebody else do it. Everybody like playing the game. Oh, going for that extra rebound, that's too much work. I'm going to let Lisa Lance do it. No, I'd take the ball out of her hand if I had to. <laughs> uh, I'm going to let somebody else get that loose ball. I'm going out of bounds. Uh-uh, I got to go out of bounds in the stands. I ain't hear no whistle or uh, nothing. I am pursuit. I'm in the pursuit. And that's my mindset. And and so I've created this mentality. This mentality just has involved in me because of how things happen in my life. So I love competition. I love the opportunity to to share and to remind these young ladies of their greatness and young boys too. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. And I'm just, I'm excited. I, 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 I appreciate my parents gave, giving me an amazing foundation and I feel like I owe it to the next generation. I, I feel love like that. I owe it when I travel overseas. I just got some pictures today at a year. I was overseas a year ago and had took all these pictures with these young ladies over there and they thought, let them tell it. I was a messiah. <laughs> they had me. Oh, they had me on class. They, listen, they like they felt like I was like, "Are you real?" I'm like, "It's amazing the platform that God gives us." I I can't sit on my lawns and think that it's all me. Cause yeah. I, I, listen, I, the, the 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 he he spared me in that car accident. And he allowed me. He's not gonna do what we should do. He he he's not gonna. We gotta have faith. We gotta walk in faith. Faith without work is nothing. And and, and 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 dreams without work is just an illusion. Oh, I love that. And that's I love from that. Betty, that's from Betty White. She's a, a track Olympian track uh, star. But I just, to me, I, I I I'm thankful that the platform that I have to share, and I'm thank I'm thank you for allowing me to come in and share, you know, my story because I always say that uh, that's why that, that too much is given, much is required. And, and even in spite of what I go through in my own personal life, I know that my calling is bigger than me. And that's what keeps me thriving and, and, and persevering because these young girls, I talked to a group of young girls the other day, about 40 girls from uh, transitioning yeah. to uh, Mississippi, to top Mississippi girls that were getting ready to go to college. And I was just giving them some, some input, some nuggets to prepare them for that transition. And I just said, ladies, and my word was be hungry. Because listen, I said, listen, you ain't the only one that's been in the newspaper. When you get the car, right. right. you ain't the only one that got a trophy on your mantle. I said, but you go there and you go there and you play. You go there, you'll be humble to the game. But you go there and you bust your butt and you play and you feel like I belong there. I said, every day in practice, you train, you play like you're number two. I said, but when you get in the game, you play like you're number one. I love that. I love train, that. Like, train like you're number two. And play like you're number one. That's amazing, and I and I'm sure you know the mentoring that you're doing with these kids um, is amazing for them. Mm -hmm. So you told a story about jumping the fence. How old were you? My kids? No. How old were you to jump that fence? Oh, about fourteen. Wow. And I do a lot of my speeches. I was giving. I was. I, I actually had a. I spoke in uh, eight from three. No, I spoke in the fall at a at a um, at a women summit, and all these women are successful women that are way more successful than me. On to my forehead, they got their own business, and I'm like, I, I was like, what am I gonna say to these women? You know that they don't already know, and I, and I still having like a little bit of anxiety thinking about it. And I'm like, so you know what? I, I don't think I got as my story, and and so I reflected on my story, my journey. I'm like, what part of this story can relate? That they can relate to, that that could resonate with them, and I always pray about, Lord, give me. I don't. I don't want to try to sound like I'm from Harvard. I don't want to try to sound like I got it all figured out. I said I just want to be able to to relay a message. I, hope, I said, what is your? What are those women? What do they need to hear? And so, what came to me about what is your why? Mm -hmm. I said, some of you 
What is your why? What you do? You have your own reason. You may be doing it, you know, whatever it is. They may be doing it just for the money. That's your why. That's your why. Or you may be doing because it it's a, it's a passion of yours because your your grand father did though it might be something that you owe to your kid you know whatever your why is you hold on to that my why i knew what my why was i jumped over that fence when i got on that bus i knew what my why was when mm. i paid my way to go to the national trials i knew my why my why is i want to play basketball i knew what my why was when i would go out there loose ball when i would knock my own teammate down to get it i had a why side of me that i said this is my why this is what i do and i'm gonna hold on to that and it might not make sense to anybody else even my own family was like what's the big deal about jumping this fence Okay, we know you can do it. Why was it important? And that's what I, I don't, at the time, I didn't know. I said, I know it's something inside of me, burning inside of me that I just don't want to make, I don't want a shortcut. I yeah. got to get through that fence. That was a stepping stone that that moment changed my life. So, so my topic was then was, what is your why slash what is your fence? Oh, yeah. What is your fence? And your fence could be said, what is a barrier that's trying to keep you from from elevating, from rising, from going to the next level. And my mind was telling me that fence was higher. It wasn't. It was my mind telling me that. All these distractions coming in our life, keeping us from going forward. What if I fail? What if I, you know, I know if we, you know, when, when you are, when, when a little bit of fear set in, it's okay to have somewhat fear or to be a little bit unsure. That's, that's part of nature. That's part of our natural instincts. But it's about, even it's, it's a natural feel like I want to quit. Yeah. But the key is it's not. Finding value and persevering. Because uh, I feel like sometimes if you don't feel like quitting at least three times, you're not working hard enough. You're not doing it. You're not working hard enough. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. It, it, it's something that works. It's like, what is the value in persevering and not quitting and say, I want I want more of this. I'm going to push. I'm going to push. And so, and, and that's one of the reasons that I love to speak and I love to share because all this is from experience. Hey, I love reading stories. I'm a, I love reading. I love, but listen, what I'm telling you, this is my life. I've lived this. When I share with my Aim High program for girls, I when I tell the lady, they get all amazed, like, oh my God, you mighty Ruthie. How can you have gone through those things? How can you ever doubt it yourself? How can you look in the mirror and then like who you I looked in the mirror with a gold medal in my hand, then like who I saw. Mm. So because of the abuse and the domestic violence, I said, but I'm glad that the foundation my parents gave me, I was able to pick myself up and I was able to find some value. And some I had I, I was able to find some strength. And what helped me was during that time was exercising. You know, even though I felt this small as a woman, mm. I'm like, I can do pull-ups. Or I can do pitch up. I can flex my muscles. I'm strong. And that gave me that little bit of hope was that my that my physical strength transformed into that my helped me with my emotional. I'm like, I am strong. I am somebody. My teammates was a safe haven for me. Mm. Able to, and that's why I played so hard. They validated me. They, they 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 celebrated me, and that's why I would go, I would play so hard, because during that time I I, I wasn't sure of myself, you know. But that that space what they gave me allowed me to feel like hey you know I am somebody. My teammates validated me. They elevated me, and that's why it's so important going through trauma to exercise, and to you know someone going through something and to remind them of things that they that, that they do well. Yeah. Don't focus on the abuser. Don't focus on the abuse that that is just think about, hey, just bring up, hey, you remember you used to sing or you remember we used to go do this from Mike, but she's lost her self-worth. Mm. She's lost, she don't even sometimes you feel like I, I don't you, you about don't even know your name. It's like and it's weird. It's a thing that only people that go through it can really understand. But I had to go through some training afterwards and I was just blown away by the man the, the mentality, how you then you got women that 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 own their own business that are CEOs go through it and feel like, what is my worth? Do I even have mm -hmm. any value? And you go through that feeling like you, you're on a slippery slope. You're trying to figure out who I, who, am, who am I? And so I always encourage women to make sure they take care of their bodies, exercise. That's one thing you got control over. Control the things you can control at the time and then protect your, to protect your space. And then also uh, is to remind, and for one, to remind you and also think about things that you do. With. What do you do? that you do well, you know, whether it's seen, whether it's right, whether it's a uh, knit a blanket, find mm -hmm. where you can remember where you were, you felt like you, you were somebody, you felt like you were elevated that you had your, that your self worth was in because it would get ripped away from you, you know, without you even realizing. It. Wow. Wow. That's, that's so deep. Uh, how, um, how long did you go through the abusive relationships? 
Uh, I was in it for like 10 years mm -hmm. in my um, first marriage. And and uh, it was tough. I was young. I didn't know a lot about relationships. And he was my first. And and uh, it was uh, he was my first. And it was just it was just a tough place. I'm young. I don't know a lot. And I'm just trying to. And I had told myself that I would never. When I got married one time, that was it. No matter how tough it get. I'm not a quitter. You know, I'm not a quitter. I didn't quit. I jumped over that fence. Yeah, yeah. I'm not a quit. I got on that bus. I paid my way to go trial. So anytime right. I had challenges, I was like, okay, I got just do. All I do is just push and press, but not to, but but not to quit. And so that was the hardest thing for me with that because I didn't. I wasn't used to quitting when I would go to counseling on my own mm -hmm. and asking the my therapist like. What is wrong with me? He said, nothing wrong with you. I would go and he said, you got to, you might have to show tough love and leave for a while. And I'm like, me, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't quit. I, that's quitting is not in my DNA. I'm like, I, I don't know. You must don't really know who I am, but I don't walk away from anything. Right. I'm a fighter. But see, the thing about it is that there, the Bible says a time for everything, a time to leave and a time to stay. Mm -hmm. But I didn't comprehend that. And I just didn't know how to quit. I didn't know how to to lose, I didn't know how to walk away because my my career had evolved. Every time I persevered and pushed, then I became a uh, champion. Yeah, and so my strength sort of became my weakness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So trying to decipher between that was hard. It was like I didn't know a victory was staying. I didn't know a victory was leaving. I don't think I want to know what decipher what victory was, and I just couldn't figure it out. I was torn, and I just. And the only time when I decided, and it was hard, when I decided to make a move, is when I had to put someone else that I love more than myself. With gold medals and world championship, I still didn't really love myself. Right, right. And I had to put someone there in that chair that I love more than me, and that was my niece. I didn't have kids at the time. So I had to put my niece there. That was practically my daughter, my twin brother daughter. I put her, and I looked like, I said, you know, that's not... If he was saying those things to her that he's saying to me, or someone was talking to her the way he talking to me, or if I was someone treated her, I'm like, that's not right. That, that, that's not what love looks like. Mm -hmm. like. That is like, and it's almost scared me, like, oh my goodness. And so I realized that's what I'm going through. So I had to show tough love, and I, I ended up leaving. I had to, I actually ran away that night because it was it had got pretty heated. And my dad, um, I actually renewed my vows with a black eye. Uh, and so my dad, uh, he said, this is your life. You know, we're always here for you. But he always said, if you ever threaten your life, take it seriously. And so I knew my vows. And, um, but once he, when he told me face to face that he would kill me, then that's when I, it was sad. I'm like, that I would hear someone that I loved, that I thought I would grow old with. Someone, right. someone I used to dress like, someone that always brought me my favorite snacks when I would come in, you know, from a trip and it was hard for me because I felt like I had failed. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I was not a failure. But I felt like I failed this thing called marriage. And it was tough for me. I, I dealt with that for a while. Um, and so that's why traveling and sharing my story from pain to power. Yes. By, by all sometimes we control. You don't want to let go. You want to let go of the your pain, you have to address and you have to be true to yourself. And where it hurts, you have to say it hurt. Because your pain can become your power if you keep suppressing it. Right. And uh, you have to face face it and say, this is where I'm at, but I want to grow. And uh, and the thing about it is that the true gift of forgiveness, of forgiving yourself or forgiving him or whatever. Because, you know, a lot of women, we deal with the guilt of what we go through and how we react. We feel like we've done something that um that we we deserve what we're getting. Hopi, what happened? Do you waste the coffee? No, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna lie to you. Wait, like, That's okay. Wait. You're fine. Um, <laughs> but um, but I'm just uh, I got it over here. Sorry. But um, anyway, um, I'm just thankful that I can be a voice for the women, and that I I've traveled overseas a lot for U.S. Embassy. I've gone to Samoa, New Zealand. Uh, Papua New Guinea. Uh, I've gone to women prisons. It has. It was so. Until my it. 
I didn't realize how unhealed I was as I was doing this three and a half years ago speaking and and um and I'm thankful that um that I've been able to be a voice and be yeah send the gap for these women overseas that don't have the resources that we have. And so I'm thankful that I've been chosen, you know, to me many a call, but there was few chosen. And I'm glad he's chosen me to be a voice to be uh, one of the the uh, women that, that leave a legacy of um, of helping women rise above. Yeah. And, and creating a space of um, to let them know that they matter and that they are powerful and that they are warriors and that they are the mavericks that they are. And yeah. mavericks are women that sort of have fallen down, left or dead, and get back up and say, "Hey, I I'm am, here. I'm here. I'm gonna make my own way. I'm gonna. I'm gonna make a way out of no way. I'm gonna hurt here. I'm gonna shine. I'm a flex. I'm gonna be strong. And and I'm gonna and I'm gonna strive. I might share some tears, but I'm gonna grow in my tears. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna grow where I'm at. You know. And so those are mavericks, and they make their they make their own way, and they do things that are um." That people look at them, you serious? Are you you gonna try to be a single parent with five kids, knowing you going through? Are you gonna try to go to and get your uh, masters and 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 you nobody in your family even went to even graduate from college? You know those things where you say, okay, watch me work. Yeah, those are yeah. two matters to watch me work. So I'm just thankful that I can share my story um, and really and help women. Yeah, and I'm sure you've helped countless women with your story. And look at you, uh, an Olympian, um, an author, someone who has traveled the world, um, but also came through through it alive and better. I say again. I repeat the question. I said they just look at you as somebody who came through it. Oh yeah, it is. And when I share my story, they get amazed. Like you, for real. A lot of lot of the younger girls, um, a lot of the younger girls that when I did WNBA tour, they thought I was just coming in just as a spokesperson. They didn't know I had been through it myself. Oh my God, that was, they were so emotional, some emotional moments. And one, um, one of the young lady, um, Price, she she played and uh, she went to Mississippi, Ole Miss. And um, her coach, coach, my coach too, so we were all good friends. And when I went to, the, I think she was playing with Washington at the time. And when I shared my story and I got so emotional, she literally came up there and just like kneeled down by just by me and just it was oh my god, it was so emotional. She just like, oh my goodness, I and a lot of them just wanted to just rescue me. Like we yeah. just, so sorry you went through what you went through. But I told them, I said, No, this I, it was something that I had sort of had to go through. Like I when I, I wasn't one thing about going through that, you're not gonna really pivot until you get to a place where you ready. No matter what people say. Yeah. That's why when I went home and I, I had a you know, a black eye and my dad, they said, why would my dad still marry us? Because I said, if he hadn't married us, I would have got somebody else to marry us because mm. I wasn't ready to walk away. I wasn't ready to give up. I was still, you know, trying to make it work and I would have found a way. And so my dad was like, you're just saying, we're here for you. you know, this house is yours whenever. But we have to sort of make our own decision. That's the, that's the bottom line. You just have to show them love and support them. But you can't make that person she going through something you love on her and tell her, hey, I'm a phone call away. I love you. She's going through abuse. I'm here for you. But don't ever give her automated. You'll lose her. Wow. Uh, yeah. Because I, I enjoy talking to my sisters, the one that say, hey, never really, you know, talk to the one that talks about them or always, you know, because you always going to try to protect your, you know, you focus on her. Yeah. You know, don't don't talk about, oh, you, you know, because you already feel bad enough you the decisions you've made. So you want to be uplifted. So Sometimes less is more. Just say, hey, I know you're going through tough time. I'm here for you. And I'll just phone call away. And some, that sometimes that's, that's plenty. That's great advice. You know, people people need to hear that, of how to respond to people that are going through traumatic events. Yes. So that's amazing. Listen, Ruthie, I can, you are a force, OK? You, <laughs> you are absolutely amazing. And I mean, I could talk to you forever. I know you. I know you got to run. Bring me, the, bring me the charger, Chris. I'm sorry. <laughs> Chris, bring me the charger, please. Hurry.
But, um, it's, yeah, I think you're amazing. And I, and I love that you're out there sharing your story and helping other women um, through whatever they're going through as well. Yeah, you know, I, I love it. And like I say, anytime you need me, we can do a Pain the Power series. Or we yeah, for do, sure. You know, I really want to um, plug, plug it up, sweetie. I really want to, I, I feel like this is part of my, my calling and um and i just really want to um thank you um yeah and i really want to inspire the girls and empower the girl and I'm, I'm being proactive with my aim high program no 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 Can you hold it with my i got you with my aim high my hope it was yours okay i'm on the thing live okay y'all help them with the hot spot um I, i'm working with my aim high girls my program and um about aim higher than your frustration and disappointment and shame because i tell them about my story about you know my sh my shame and i was afraid for them to come out the documentary because i was like what is people gonna think about me you know i'm uh you know why are you sharing this now you want people to feel sorry for you all these things in my head and i almost didn't want to do it and i just decided to uh, go ahead and do it because they said you're gonna save a lot of women's lives yeah and so um so i'm just uh thankful i went ahead and did it and uh it's it's um it was a tough place. It was a tough transition for me. Yeah. But I'm thankful. And now with the girls, my aim high girls, I, I it's like a proactive state. It's like, hey, I talk about that relationship, value relationship, talk about the, the, the greatness in them, talk about the, the 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 opportunity, like don't don't you teach people how to treat you. Mm. You teach people when I, at at being married six months when he beat my butt after when he I and when I let that go and didn't do anything about it, I would tell him it was okay. Right. It was okay to beat me, you know. And so every time he did, I'll tell him it was okay. So you teach your people how to treat you. And so we talk about that in my program about aim high, I hired and all that. Value who you are, love who you are, embrace all your imperfections. Know you are somebody, you got your own set of fingerprints. And I and, and this is what we paint a picture of love. This is not what love looks like. And if somebody, you know, somebody love you that way, that's not there's a difference between love and addiction. No, don't an, an obsex, obsession. Right, right. Wow. The importance of love and, and our obsession and stuff. The obsession is cute, initially, but it can it can lead to a really disaster. Yeah, dangerous situation. Yes. I love that you just said that. You said obsession is cute initially, but yeah, yeah. then it can transform into something that's not cute. Yes. Yeah. Wow. Want, that. Yeah. It, it won't know everywhere you go. All you know, micromanaging you, the jealousy. Oh, it's so cute. You really love me, you know. But that ends up that is. Most time turns out bad. Yeah. Wow. Listen, like I said, you are absolutely amazing. And I, I appreciate you talking to me today. I would love to do that, you know, power uh, series with you. So we can paint the power. Paint the power. We can definitely uh, talk about that and do something. But you have a couple books. You have some CDs. We want to uh, plug all that and uh, yeah. just tell people where they can get that from. Um, you know, Ashley. Um, I guess we'll, we'll have a link maybe to your website. People can reach out Perfect. to you. Yep. And then also too, if somebody just want to reach out to me, I also do, uh, I do, I do, uh, coaching calls where I do, um, uh, you know, calls for 30 minutes. I, I've done it for a long time, but I'm doing it more methodical now. Okay. I call, talking about how you turn your pain to power, talking about how you get, it can rise above. And, um, and so, I have like, what is your why? What is your fan? So I do some 30 minute calls and there was a small price to it. But um I also my book from Pain to Power is a great book for any women that's going through a relationship stuff, going through that going through abuse and shares my whole story and that. And then for Ride of a Lifetime is a book mainly for youth. It just tells my story like how I overcame challenges mm -hmm. in basketball. You know, time when the coach didn't recruit me, how I was able to know the yes how I was able to make the best of the situation. So it's more of a, just a basketball, sort of a basketball story, persevering, overcoming. And then uh, I have a journal, an interactive journal for teenage girls called Keep Your Mighty Power because I want these girls to know they mighty. You you was born with that power, so I want you to keep it. So we talk about ways to keep that power by your mindset, your attitude. So you can reach out to me uh, via email, ruru525 at aol.com. Or you can go to Facebook, and it's tricky. My Facebook friends are full, but you can message me, Ruthie Bolton. If Ruthie Bolton doesn't work, because I think I have two or three pages, go Mighty, Mighty Ruthie Bolton. And you can message me if, um, and then, um, and I'll make sure, you know, message me. 
And you know, we got this new thing that I'm you can message me, we can talk about whatever book you want, uh, Ride of a Lifetime, Paint the Power, and then I could um, you know, we could, you know, Venmo the money, cash out, you know, that whole different thing, and then I can send you the book. So that's what I've been doing during this pandemic, is just doing it that way. And then uh, and if anybody reach out to you, you can always reach out to me and let me know Perfect. my request. And also too, lastly, I'm actually doing um, I'll, like I'm doing coaching calls and we can actually do coaching calls on Zooms. Now you, you get in when you see a person, it actually makes a lot more sense. So, so anyway, so if anybody interested in, um, I could give you more details on calls through my uh, messenger. That's perfect. That's perfect. Listen, Ruthie, it has been absolutely amazing talking to you and your message is powerful. And I appreciate you going out there and sharing it with the world. As Ruthie Bolton has said, you are valuable. You have a purpose in this life and you can rise above. So Ruthie, thank you so much for joining us today. This has been, I think we lost her. This has been, oh, you there? Been, yep. <laughs> So, I just said, oh, there was a call. Yeah, I was okay. so happy we only got. That's a miracle. I only got one call. <laughs> Hold on, I can't hear you now. Oh, can you hear me? Can oh. you hear me? Yes. Oh, I can't hear you. I don't know why. Okay. Well, we just said thank you so much, okay. and we will talk to you soon. This thank has been you, make, make kind loud conversations that turn up the volume.